Good afternoon. Welcome to the KSP Training Academy and our 2022 Fallen Officer Memorial Service. On behalf of the entire agency, thank you for attending. Attending from the Governor's Office, Executive Secretary J. Michael Brown. Attending from the Kentucky Justice and Public Safety Cabinet, Secretary Kerry Harvey and Deputy Secretary Keith Jackson. Attorney General Daniel Cameron, Secretary of State Michael Adams, State Treasurer Allison Ball, Kentucky Auditor Mike Harmon, Eric Johnson, Supporting Heroes, members of the Kentucky Law Enforcement Council and the Kentucky State Police Professional Association. I, wanted to, I want to thank other law enforcement agency members who are here, local law enforcement, fish and wildlife, military, and our federal partners. We are truly one family in law enforcement. One programming note, we had hoped to hold this ceremony outside today in front of the trooper statue. Unfortunately, the weather did not cooperate with us. Therefore, we will not have the scheduled flyover by the KSP aircraft branch that is noted on your agenda. We are honored to have the 202nd Army National Guard Band of Kentucky with us here to provide musical accompaniment for our ceremony. We have several members of the Kentucky State Police Foundation Board with us, and we want to thank them for donating the beautiful wreath for today's ceremony. The wreath has 37 white carnations representing all our fallen units, 29 troopers, two officers, six highway patrolmen. The red rose represents all the families they left behind. This year, we added a yellow rose in memory of former KSP Sergeant Jody Cash and retired trooper Jerry Critchlow. Their families will always be part of the thin gray line. You may notice that some guests are wearing black ribbon with the word family embossed on it. That ribbon indicates that the person wearing it is a family member of a fallen KSB trooper or officer. Not only do we gather today to honor our fallen officers, but we also gather to remember the sacrifices of those left behind. We want you to know we will never forget the legacy of your trooper or officer. And most importantly, we hope you know that you are and will always be family to us. At this time, I ask that our fallen officer family members please rise to be recognized. Thank you. One family could not be here today. The Jason Kamick family. Jennifer Kamick is having surgery out of state, and I know you will join us in keeping her in your thoughts and prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem and the posting of the colors and the playing of the national anthem. Thank you. 
Thank you, guests. Please be seated. We are honored that our first speaker accepted the invitation to participate in today's ceremony. As I said before, while it is important that we never forget the sacrifices of our officers and troopers, it is just as important that we remember the survivors of those units. Speaking today on behalf of the fallen families is Randy Crispin, father of Trooper Eric Crispin, who died serving the Commonwealth on June 23rd, 2015. Please help me welcome Randy Crispin. I will protect those that need protection, serve those in need, show compassion, stand up to the bully, be the best I can in everything, Never give less than my all. My God is first, family second, and everyone is family. These are the words that troopers found on Eric's desk in his little duplex in Lyon County where he was serving the day after he was killed in the line of duty. We believe Eric wrote those words just a few days before. Eric was born September 13th. 1991, he came home to a big sister, Emily Kay, a big brother, Evan Kyle. He grew up in a normal family. He was one of only a few students to go from kindergarten all the way to graduation from the Christian Academy of Lawrenceburg. Eric was a child that could capture people with his smile and his laugh. He loved sports. He helped chores around the house and even around the farm and complained very little. After graduating high school, Eric attended WKU on a presidential scholarship. He studied as part of the Honors College. He graduated with a degree in sociology, a minor in psychology and criminology. Eric's taste for police work first came from his mom, Dawn. She was a police officer in Anderson County, but he got a real good hands-on feel for the job, starting with the WKU Police Department Explorer Program. Eric was the only person to work as an explorer all four years of college. He was the captain of the union his senior year. After graduating from WKU, Eric started applying for positions all across the, the area, but finally he got that call from KSP. He wanted to be part of the thin gray line. He was so excited, and Don and I believe that it was the hand of God on Eric's life and our life. Eric started the KSP Academy in 2014 of August as part of Cadet Class 1990, or I'm sorry, Cadet Class 92. He completed it in January of 2015. Many weekends, he would come home and I wondered, would he go back? But he was so determined. When it came time to pick post, Eric Pitt, post one, Mayfield. We wondered why, but he said so many people had family that they need to be closer to. And Eric was a single man and he said, post one will be good. As we moved Eric to Lyon County in a little duplex where he would live, we encouraged him to find a church the first Sunday in town, knowing it would be very difficult for him to do. And being a good Christian young man, he did just that. Little did we know till later, but that church was home to the sheriff of Lyon County, Kent Murphy, and also KSP Lieutenant, Brent White. It was a great fit for Eric, and it was also a church that took him in like a son. Eric became a solid trooper. People say he was fair and just, always with a Bible in his car and a smile on his face. On Father's Day weekend, June of 2015, we had a great time having a family get together. We knew Eric had to travel back to Lyon County on that Monday. I had no idea when I said goodbye to him and he patted me three times on the back and said, I love you, Pops, that that would be the last time. On Tuesday, June 23rd, 2015, Eric was involved in a vehicle accident that took his life instantly. Our lives changed forever that day. To come home to troopers and pastors at your house and them to tell you you've lost your baby boy, it's the worst thing I've ever had happen in my life. 
Since those early days of Eric's death, we have been blessed to hear so many great stories about Eric from his friends, his co-workers. They never get old. One of my fondest memories is from Trooper Cameron Ponder. He shared a story about Eric coming up behind him on a traffic stop. This was after Eric had already given 10-8 and should have been heading home. Cameron said, it was so good to see those blue lights coming up behind me. And then Eric walking up to his car and said, how are you, Ponder? Trooper Cameron Ponder was killed in the line of duty on September 13th, 2015, just nine days after telling me this story. Dawn and I set out on an adventure a few years ago to visit every grave site of all KSP line of duty deaths and try to go to every road sign and bridge dedicated to the fallen officers. While doing this, we've been able to meet some family members of troopers. On a vi visit to Henderson in June of 2020, we stopped by Trooper Mac Brady's grave. Like so many line of duty deaths, Trooper Brady was killed in a motor vehicle accident. We were met at the gravesite by his son, Ed Brady, who was then the sheriff of Henderson County. And at the time, he, uh, we also found out he was a retired KSP trooper. On that day, Sheriff Brady put on a memory bracelet for Eric and said he would wear it until it breaks. Fast forward to just last week, a family friend, a dentist in Henderson that went to school with our daughter, Emily, Brit Brittany says a patient came in and she said, while I look, he's getting in the chair, his name, Ed Brady, he was wearing that bracelet. She said, we took time to reflect on Eric and how we knew Eric. My point to all this is KSP family is large. It goes a lot of places and they never forget. In the days that followed Eric's death, you, the law enforcement community, gave Eric a ceremony like none other. You were there for us in so many ways. We have no idea how we would have gotten through this without the support of our family, friends, our law enforcement family, cops, supporting heroes, Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial, and the KSP Foundation. The foundation right now is in the midst of a fundraiser to build a track, a driver's track. And so many line of duty deaths are vehicle accidents. We receive cards, letters, even Christmas ornaments in honor of Eric. We love and appreciate every story we hear. That night, June 23rd, 2015, we were told that Eric would never be forgotten. You said KSP will never forget, and we have been blessed beyond measure by our law enforcement family. You truly have not forgotten. Thank you. God bless. Our next speaker is Executive Cabinet Secretary J. Michael Brown. Prior to his current role, he served as Deputy Attorney General and before that, Secretary of the Justice and Public Safety Cabinet. In that role, he assisted our agency and some of the fallen officer families here today in receiving line of duty death honors and national recognition on the police memorial wall in Washington, D.C. Please welcome Secretary Brown. Well, good morning, and um, I'm going to break this in two parts. The first part is the official part. The, uh, I'm here uh, on behalf of, Gen of uh, Governor Andy Bashir, and in my role as the Cabinet Secretary for the Executive Cabinet. And I want to welcome our constitutional officers and the families of the fallen and all of the KSP family and law enforcement family here for that. Now I'm going to take some personal privilege. Risk and danger are my constant companion. I've heard those words ring out in the rotunda of the Capitol as cadets make the transition from cadet to trooper. 
It echoes, and it seems to last forever. They've rehearsed it many, many times. And the words come out, but sometimes, you know, you don't expect those words to necessarily come back and become those realities because they're young and they're vibrant. And like all of us, when we're young and vibrant, we feel immortal, but we're not. And so they go forth and they do give service above self. Of the five troopers who have gone on the wall uh, in the last 20 years, I was the cabinet secretary for four of them. And I, I learned very personally about getting the phone calls and struggling with what comes next. Sometimes it was just a personal outreach. Sometimes it was almost a bureaucratic hell as we tried to go through the stages to recognize and honor those who have served. You know, and in those last 20 years, um, we've thrown around the term hero a lot. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. So starting those years, I did not know Trooper Leonard. I was not there yet. But starting in 2013, there was Trooper Tribby. And then we moved on to Trooper Chrisman and Sergeant Gibbs. And of course, uh, uh, Trooper Ponder, and that was a, a special situation. It doesn't matter whether it's a vehicle or a bullet when those phone calls come in. Lies flash before your eyes, and you have to go back. And the first thing I'm sure that families go through, and even we go through, is, you know, was this worth it? We, we can never get the answer to the question why it happened, you know, although we struggle with that. And sometimes we reconstruct situations, but, but the why is way beyond us. Any of us who have worn a uniform of any kind have gone out, we can always ask, why did I get back? Why did I survive? Why did that happen to somebody else? That's, that's common. We never know that. That answer lies with God, you know. But the what goes into the service and the honor that has gone before us and the pain and then going through and keeping the commitment, which we do today and which KSP has always done. Now let me talk about the hero part just a little bit. You know, um, I guess certainly going back to 2011 and then now as we've gone forward, it's become quite commonplace, both for military and law enforcement, firefighters and first responders. It didn't always used to be that way. Uh, I can attest to that from many, many years ago, that we weren't so welcome. But then, unfortunately, sometimes we start to have a, a, a scale of when and how these people, these men and women become heroes. Who's more heroic than the next? And we can become desensitized. I know this nation can become desensitized. We had a horrible incident last night. And we, we know right away, as much as we suffer for the people in Texas, we have to move on. But we have to remember. I, after many years of reflection, I submit that the moment, the moment of true heroism really starts long before whatever the event is that you read about on the news. It starts when someone takes that oath and it makes that commitment. And it especially starts in the sense of the people that we put on the wall. The day they rose up and they put the uniform on, whatever that uniform was, in this case KSP, and they stood out to the world unmistakably standing for the United States, Kentucky, their families, and their agencies. There's no hiding behind that. No one has to guess who they are. No one has to guess what they stand for. And when they leave their homes that day to go out and give service, we don't know what's going to happen to them. But we know that they were ready and willing to take on the challenge that faced them that day. And as I said, none of us know when it's gonna be. 
whether it's going to be short, I'm sure, I know, I stood at the graduations of your son. I know that I stood at the promotions of many of those people. And my pictures, on, on, you know, good or bad, are on a lot of walls all over Kentucky and a lot of homes. But I will say this. Remember those who have been sacrificed by why ever. Again, we can't answer why. And always remember those who still do it because their next moment of heroism is going to come tomorrow when they get up and they put on those uniforms and they wear that indicia and they go out and risk and danger will still be their constant companions. My congratulations and condolences to all the family. God bless America and Kentucky. Our final presenter today is a 27-year veteran of the Kentucky State Police and has served in numerous assignments and held every sworn rank achievable. Appointed commissioner in April of 2021, please welcome Colonel P.J. Burnett, Jr. Thank you, Captain Blanton, and thank you to our public affairs branch for uh, uh, coordinating all these all this efforts today. What tremendous words from Randy, Secretary and Secretary Brown. Randy and his wife have been true inspirations to the Kentucky State Police and other law enforcement families who have lost a loved one in a line of duty. The Crispin family have shown true strength and resolve to help other KSP families, and we thank you. Secretary Brown, for those who aren't aware, he will be retiring from state service on August 1st of this year. As he mentioned in his previous role as the Justice and Public Safety Cabinet Secretary under former Governor Stephen Bashir, he provided direct support to some of the family members that are in attendance today. He was also in an instrumental, he was also instrumental in acquisition of the property that we are standing at, or we're sitting at today, where we have the now KSP Academy. On behalf of the families of our fallen and Kentucky State Police, we can't thank you enough for your service and we wish you good luck on your endeavors. I also want to thank everyone for your attendance today to honor the ultimate sacrifice made by these 37 members and their families of the Kentucky State Police. It is also very humbling to see so many dignitaries and government leaders here today that show their support for our agency and our family members. Finally, I'd like to recognize our KSP retirees that I see that are uh, numerous here in the room. I thank you for your attendance today. But there's one KSP retiree in particular that I would like to mention today. Callaway County Chief Deputy and retired KSP Sergeant Jody Cash was shot and killed in Western Kentucky last week. He was a true law enforcement professional and dedicated public servant. So please keep his wife and children in your prayers. As most of you know, in 1962, President John F. Kennedy signed a proclamation which designated May 5th as Peace Officers Memorial Day. Since that time, thousands gather each year to honor law enforcement officers who died in the line of duty. Someone once asked, why are there so many different law enforcement memorials? And what is the difference between them? For instance, there is Police Week in Washington, D.C., which was held just last week. Members of the Kentucky State Police attended to stand in the gap for those within our ranks whose name appear on the National Memorial Wall. For those of you who have never viewed the National Memorial Wall, 
It's quite an incredible sight. Two curving, 304 foot long blue gray limestone walls with the names of more than 22,000 law enforcement officers across our country who have died in the line of duty, which dates back to the first death that we were able to track or they were able to track in 1786. Last week made my third visit to Washington, D.C. and the National Memorial Wall. Yes, it is somber, but it's also uplifting. The men and women whose names are etched in those walls will be honored for their sacrifices forever. They deserve no less. Then there's Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial that is held in Richmond each year at the DOCJT Law Enforcement Training Complex. This is a moving ceremony that honors all Kentucky law enforcement officers who have died serving the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And then there's a KSP Memorial Service that you're here today that we host at this training academy each year. Why have another ceremony? Because this one, this one is our family, the KSP family, which will always include family members of our fallen. While the other ceremonies are remarkable tributes in their own rights and often much larger than, larger than this one, this day is set aside for the family members of our KSP fallen. We will never forget their loss. We will never forget their pain. We will never forget their trooper or officer. Each of you today walk past the bronze trooper statue on your way into this building. Unveiled in 2015, that statue was erected as a permanent tribute for KSP troopers and officers who made the ultimate sacrifice by giving their lives in a line of duty to serve the Commonwealth of Kentucky. It is my hope, it was my hope that weather would be much better today and we could have had this ceremony outside, but we just couldn't take the chance with the impending weather. But even though we couldn't be outside, I encourage each of you as you leave here today, please stop and take a moment and look at it. Look at the statue and think about the 37 fallen KSP units. And while you're there, I hope you will also take the opportunity to think about everyone that those 37 units left behind. There are heroes who serve. Those are heroes right there. And then there are heroes who carry on the legacy of those who are not able to serve anymore. And many of those heroes are right here today with us. Family members. Family members of the fallen. I want to thank each of you for continuing to carry on the legacy of your loved one. I've said it before, and I'll say it, or it will be said even after I'm gone. We will not forget you. The Kentucky State Police will always be here for you. God bless and prayers for each of you. Thank you.
Patrolman James P. Hayes Patrolman Robert L. Rowland Patrolman Captain Vernon C. Snellen Patrolman Mose H. Littrell Patrolman Houston Green Patrolman Vadis G. Richardson Trooper Harold J. Toll Trooper Robert R. Miller Trooper Lee T. Huffman Trooper Herbert C. Bush Trooper William E. Tevis Trooper Elmer Mobley, Jr. Trooper Cecil W. Uzzle Trooper Delano G. Powell Trooper Mac E. Brady Trooper William H. Barrett Trooper James W. McNeely Officer David T. Childs Trooper Walter O. Thurtell Trooper Joseph Ward, Jr. Lieutenant William C. Smith Trooper John W. Hutchinson Trooper Bobby A. McCown, Jr. Trooper William F. Pickard Lieutenant Willis D. Martin Trooper Clinton E. Cunningham Trooper Edward R. Harris Trooper Jerome S. Clifton Detective Darrell V. Phelps Trooper Johnny M. Edrington Trooper Johnny G. Adkins Officer Jason W. Kamek Trooper Jonathan K. Leonard
Trooper Anson Blake Tribby. Trooper Eric K. Chrisman. Sergeant David R. Gibbs. Trooper J. Cameron Ponder. Trooper Corey Elliott, KSB Chaplain, will now provide the benediction. Would you join me in prayer? Let's bow our heads. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He lies me down in green pastures. He leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my, my head with oil. My cup, it overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, what a, what a visual that you give us for the Good Shepherd. And that's my prayer, Father, today, Lord, that, that you would lift up the family members who are still picking up those broken pieces, Father, and you would be a shepherd to them, that you would lead them. Lord, I just pray, Father, that you put your angels about the troopers who are currently working, the officers, officers who are currently working, God, that your angels would be about them and guard them in all their ways. Lord, I pray you would raise up generations of, of courageous, courageous men and women, Father, who will don the uniform and carry it on. Lord God, I just, we come before you and we're so grateful for the sacrifice that your son gave to us. And Father, I just, I believe your words and I believe they're true. And uh, we just pray your favor over everyone here, Father. You said, blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. And you told Aaron, Father, you said, pray this prayer and I'll bless my people. So I pray it over everyone here that the Lord would bless you, the Lord would keep you, that the Lord would shine his face on you, that he would be gracious to you, that the Lord would turn his face towards you and that he would give you peace. We ask all this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Before we close today's ceremony, I would like to once again thank everyone for attending, but most especially the families of our fallen officers. For those of you who need to leave, the shuttle vans and golf carts are available and waiting to take you back to your parking area. The shuttles will run through 3 p.m. today, so please take your time. This concludes today's ceremony. Please have a safe drive home.